Hello everyone. Thanks for stopping by Sewing Machine Rehab today. We are continuing on our restoration with this lovely Singer 301A. And on the last video, we took out the feed regulator. So today we are going to go ahead and take off this lampshade and we're going to start removing the wiring. One of the things that I didn't mention in the last video at the end is that that will also include removing the motor from the machine. So a little bit more to bite off here than we originally thought, but I didn't think about that when I was filming that, yes, the motor will come out at this point. So then we're getting pretty close. So to just jump right in, I am going to remove the lamp cover here. And I actually, once I take it off, I disassemble it a little bit further to clean it. But there's just two screws that hold it on, on the 301. And you just kind of want to keep a grip on it because you don't want it to fall down onto the bed of the machine. Most of these machines have already seen their share of wear. We don't want to make it worse. So they shouldn't be too tight in there and they just screw out. They're longer screws and the lamp shade should just come off like that. First thing that I want to point out is these screws are not different lengths. So there is not a right or a left. So you have the two screws and then you have the lamp shade. Now, this is a magnifying lens for the light. And to get it off, there is just a little metal clip and a screw here that you have to remove. And just make sure you're holding everything together so you don't drop and break the lampshade. Take out that little screw. It's not very long, just enough to screw into the shade. So you can see it's a short little screw. Then this little metal clip here will just come free. And now you can separate the glass shade from the lampshade. So one of the things that I point out to my uh, buyers who buy the machines is that, you know, you don't have to keep these on. You can if you want, but when I put in an LED light bulb when I'm finished, I find that I like the light that comes down on the bed of the machine a lot better without the shade, but it's kind of a personal decision. So the bulbs, they're bayonet style light bulb, and you should just be able to push in and turn a little bit back towards the machine and the bulb will come out. And this is a pretty, I don't know how old this bulb is. You never know if you're getting the original or not, but honestly, this is going in the trash. So what I have here is my shade, the screws that hold it in, screw in the metal clip and the glass cover. And all I'm going to do at this point is just bag these all up together until I'm ready to clean them and set them aside. So the next thing that we'll want to do is go ahead and loosen this screw right here. This is what holds this light uh, fixture in place. So it goes left to loosen. This one actually turned pretty easy, but you just take this screw out. There we go. So it's funny because all the screws are a little bit different. So sometimes you think, well, I could use, you know, this screw somewhere else on the machine. Typically you can't. <laughs> They all kind of have their own unique place, but this is a screw that holds in the light socket in place. So now what we have to do is get up to the top of the machine. And I think in this video, I will probably uh, stop and start a little bit so you don't have to go through all the adjustments I'm going to make to the camera. I don't wanna make anyone seasick. 
So let me get that set up and we'll carry on. Okay, now we're going to look down into the top of the machine. And if you see this right here, this is just a little metal guard and it holds this wire for the light in place. It also kind of acts as a guard against some of the grease that's flying off as the gears spin. But if you just pull up on it, that's all you have to do to remove it. And you can see, we'll get all this nasty stuff off before we put it back. So what you have here is the, the wiring for the lamp, which connects to the wiring for the motor. And you have a couple options. Some people will remove these wire nuts. They will go ahead and separate these wires so you can pull this through this little rubber grommet here and all the way out. Other people will leave them. So for me, it depends on the machine that I'm cleaning actually. On these black machines, I'm never gonna get this fully wet in a way that I'm worried about the wiring. So I do not take this apart. Another reason why I don't like to is these little nut, these little wire nuts, they're really small. And maybe I haven't looked hard enough, but I have a hard time finding ones this size anymore. And so when I do cut the wiring and put on new wire nuts, uh, I feel like I have a bigger uh, bunch of plastic to stuff down into the machine. So I am leaving them on for this. There are videos out there that will show you how to unscrew these, cut and trim the wires and add new wire nuts. In this case, I don't have any issues with the wiring of the machine. I'm not going to be getting it really wet or anything. So I'm just gonna leave them there. So now what we have to do is start working from the underside of the machine. So <laughs> this is you worked on the front, you're working in the top. Now we're gonna work on the bottom for a little bit. So I'm going to flip the machine over and show you what we do next. Okay, so now we're looking under her skirt here. So this metal piece right here is actually the support that holds the motor up in place. And there is a screw right here that you have to loosen in order to get the motor out. And do use a heftier screwdriver that's why this slot on the screw is so big in the first place. And you should just be able to turn it free. I think I loosened this one ahead of time because that was super easy. But anything to save a little bit of time. And it's a little bit longer. It's not a short, short screw. So you will have to give it a few turns before it's all the way out. And here we go. So this screw is what holds this cover on, which holds the motor in place. Now, you should be able to just slide this off, okay? And set it aside, whoops, with this screw, bag it up if you want. And now we're looking at the wiring for the motor. And we have two leads here that plug in to uh, little prongs on the motor and you want to pull these loose. Now do not grab the wire here and pull. Don't ever do that. Instead, make sure you've got a nice grip on the gray part and just wiggle it free. And I always do the one on the left first so then I can get a better grip in on the right. And it really is a tight squeeze with the hands but you should just be able to pull it free like that. Now I am going to flip the machine back up so I can see if this motor is just going to drop out or if I'm going to have to coax it a little bit. I think what I will do is first I'll just flip this uh, whole machine up and see if the motor is going to fall out. Oh, I didn't hear that clunk. 
That's always the noise I'm looking for is that motor kind of falling down because there's really nothing that's holding the motor into place now. It is only uh, varnished oil that's really keeping it stuck in there. So sometimes a little push, sometimes if you work from the bottom, get back on the motor here. Sometimes you can wiggle the motor a little bit left and a little bit right, and that will sort of loosen it. But this one, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's pretty stuck in there. And this is one place that I don't want to put oil. I really don't. I don't want oil getting down inside the motor. So I have to be a little bit creative on how I'm going to get it to free and fall out. So let me move this so it's back standing up and I have a good shot for you and I'm going to show you what I do in this situation. So here is the very top of the motor. So that motor, go, it's pretty long and skinny. It comes all the way up here and goes all the way down to the bottom of the machine. So the way that I will get it out, hopefully, is I'm going to cover the end of this worm gear and I am going to give it a couple light taps. Generally, that's all it takes. I will not hit uh, my little hammer right on top. I'll provide some cushion between my hammer and the metal of the motor and hopefully that prevents me from damaging anything and people may have different opinions on whether or not you should do this i've seen uh and heard a lot of different opinions but this is how it works for me and my hands aren't strong enough to work it free any other way so let me get what i need and i'll show you how i do it so what i have <laughs> i have a hammer and i also have this rag here which i'm going to fold up and just set right here on top. And then hopefully without whacking my fingers, I'm just, look, okay, this is already sliding down. This is lower than it was. So let me see if I can get a few more taps in there. And the rag is kind of thick. Let's see if I maybe give it a few less layers. And let's check and see. So now that I've, I've got it down a little bit, I'm going to, whoop. I don't know if you could hear that, but let's see here. Let me lower this camera. Ooh, the motor's falling out of the bottom. Um, and we'll just pull back so you can see. There we go. So now, can reach under here and ta-da, there's the motor. So this is what uh, drives the, uh, the hand wheel. Uh, okay, let me give you a better explanation. We have a commutator in here that spins around, which spins this worm gear. As a worm gear is spinning, it uh, bumps up against the gears on the hand wheel, which then rotates uh, these gears and this shaft and all the parts in your nose that make your needle go up and down. And this is pretty nasty. Um, I don't know why lately it seems like all of the ones that I get are really gross. So what I'm going to do, because we're not taking the motor apart right now, I'm just going to slip a bag over the top so I can lay it down on my table and we'll deal with that later. So now we have the motor out and let me set this back up again. So now we need to deal with the rest of uh, the wiring. And uh, because the way this 301 is designed, we actually have two different plugs. We have a plug here and we have a plug here. Your 301, it is possible this plug isn't there. And uh, but in this case, I have one, so I have to remove this and this. And there are two screws here um, that we're just going to hopefully twist out freely. 
These are pretty dirty too. I'm wondering if you can see that very good. <laughs> I don't have fancy lighting. I actually have some Ott lamps that I use when I sew and they both have two lights on them. Um, one of them is a magnifying light, which is awesome for inspecting parts. And they're just a little bendy, so I set them up and try to point them in the right direction. So here is the second screw. These screws are the same. So when you put this plug back in later, you don't have to worry about top screw, bottom screw. They're the same. So before I can get this out, I need to go ahead and loosen these two screws. And I think I need a little bit smaller of a screwdriver here. And hopefully they're not too tight. They just come out, they're short little screws and you don't want to lose them. There we go. You see it's wiggling around now as this comes free. There we go. So this is what these screws look like here that hold in this plug. And if you don't have this plug, then you just skip this step. So I'm gonna set them aside as well. Now what I need to do is work this plug up inside the machine and I'm gonna take everything out this hole. Now, you don't want to just start yanking on this. There are solder points that if you uh, like to solder wires then go right ahead and yank, but if you don't, you need to learn how to be gentle. And that might mean that you're stopping and you're looking up under the machine to see where the wires are bent and where you need to kind of work them free. It's almost like if you can get the top out and then the bottom out or the top of the plug and the bottom, you know, at different times, it's kind of, you just wedge it. Now here, let me see if you can see this. Do you see this wire up in here? It's curved, it's a, when you have it in the machine properly, it will be curved behind this hole that the motor shaft goes up into. So this wire is always tucked back behind this. It should never be in front of it, or obviously it can't be across the center or you wouldn't be able to put the motor back in. So if you just kind of lift it up over that, it just gives you a little extra wire to work with and now you can pull the whole bit out the side of the machine which turn it back around for you and let's see we'll put the light back so now since i'm not cutting the wiring i'm going to show you what i do first i have this piece, which is the plug that the um, foot controller goes into and the little leads for the motor itself. And you just have to finagle that out. Look at the back side. So for me, what I do is I undo the uh, wires from here instead of cutting them in this situation. And all you need to do, if you're worried about putting stuff back, take a picture. That's it. Take a picture so you can look at it later when you go to put it all back together and you'll know which wires go where. So again, now I really need to just worry about undoing these wires right now. These are the ones that are going up to the lamp. So I will unscrew it. Oop. And the one that goes to the lamp rests on top. And then 
when I clean this, I'll take this apart again, but just so I don't lose these screws, I'm gonna go ahead and screw it back in. And same for the other side. Let's see if I can spin it with my fingers. Yeah, so, so you see why I said not to pull on these? These, you've got little points that you can replace these, but I don't want to if they're not really damaged. And if, you know, I'd feel silly if I broke one because I was impatient. So now this plug is free and I can clean it um, separately. And this is just a job with rubbing alcohol, Q-tips, getting it all nice and clean. And it's just, it's icky from the, um, from the motor and carbon dust and all of that. So this I will set aside in a separate bag. And I am comfortable, because I know what goes where, I'm comfortable putting this in a bag along with the two little screws that are for the plug for the foot control, along with the two little screws that hold this plug to the body of the machine. And this is the uh, screw for the uh, holding the light socket in place. I put that in there too, because they're all different enough, it's not gonna be confusing. Then I can take the coat, the cover, for the motor that holds the motor in place, this big piece with, with its screw here, and I'll put that in a bag along with this guard that we took off that holds the uh, wiring for the light up top in place. Those can go together. And you should be pretty good at not mixing things up now. So let me turn this back up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna push these wires inside the machine for a minute. Just skip them so they're coming out the bottom. And let me flip the machine upright and we'll finish with how far I'm going to take this wiring out. Now I am looking at the remainder of the wiring. And there is a hole down in here that if I am careful, I can pull the wiring for the light out. Now you may need to make sure that it, um, if it has any little weird bends in it, that you straighten them out. So when you pull those bottoms of those leads up through the hole, you don't catch them on something and snag them and break them off. But I have free my wiring and if I were cleaning this machine and I wanted to give the whole body a bath, honestly, I just um, bag these pieces up, tape around them and keep them dry. And uh, then I can wipe these down, you know, when I'm done cleaning the body and the insides of the machine. So this is as far as I take the wiring apart in most cases. It works for me, it's out of my way. Um, and you know, maybe one day I'll make a video of this, but I used to do it every time when I first started restoring machines, but I realized I don't always need to. And so why go through that extra step? Why trim some of this wire off and now you have even less wire to work with? So if I can leave it, I do. So that's it. Congratulations, you just took the wiring out of the 301, or you're going to, and the motor. So what do we have left? Now we have to clean this machine and also deal with the motor. And I think I'm going to do a video on disassembling the motor. I have one already on my channel, but it was an early video that I made and I feel like I could probably do a more concise job for you. So next time we come back, 
we will go ahead and take this apart and then everything is apart and ready to clean except for the foot pedal <laughs> but maybe we'll save that for uh last anyway i hey i hope you've had a good time watching this i hope you're learning something if you like what you're watching please subscribe and uh, give it a thumbs up and i look forward to seeing you again soon have a good day bye